In this series of videos, we are creating an XML document and we are manipulating it with several good XML tools. In our previous video, we described what XPath is, and I indicated that there are a few examples that we can go through, and in this video, I want to go through those examples. So XPath, uh, first of all, we're going to use the XML document that we've been working with in this video series, which is describing a tree when it blooms, and also some specimens of that tree, or in other words, some trees that we can physically touch as opposed to just the scientific definition of what a tree is. This is a relatively short XML document by XML standards, but nonetheless it offers us an excellent opportunity to try out some XPath features. So let's have a go with it. So I'm going to navigate over to this uh, free online XML, uh, this freeformatter.com, which is a way that we can test XPath. I've simply selected the XPath tester on the left. So I copy and I'm going to paste in my XML document, just like so. And now I navigate down and we have this XPath expression. So first, let's say that I want to start at the root element called plant. And by the way, sorry, one note, I mentioned this in the previous video, I just want to mention it one more time. Uh, there are several tools, CodeBeautify is one, CountWordsFree.com is another. There are several tools where you can load XML and it gives it to you in a tree view, which is really handy when you're putting together an XPath expression. So let's say that I want to start at the root node called plant and I want to jump down to specimens and I want to see all of the specimens but I'm not worried about any of the other plant stuff in this document. Okay, easy enough. All I need to do is a slash, uh, backslash, forward slash, I always forget which is which and so do people uh, who I'm talking to. So on an American keyboard, this is the slash that you'll find on the question mark key. So the slash where the top goes to the right. So we do slash plants and then slash again specimens. So that means start from the very root element called plants and then find the specimens. Now I'm going to choose test XPath and uh oh, no match what I do wrong. So plant, uh, you know, okay, I see. See, this is why I like testing things out. It should be singular plant, not uh, plural plant and then text XPath. And sure enough, take a look at what it returns. It returns a subset of our XML document and in this case, it is returning only the specimens, not the plant stuff that's up above. Okay, so let's say we want the first specimen. For that, we just make a, a subtle change here. Uh, we're going to so go ahead and say plant and then specimens, which is the plural type. But we're saying that we only want this first specimen, latitude 3947 and minus 84.51, which is roughly Cincinnati. So for that, I'm going to say slash again, and then I'm going to jump from the specimens tag to the specimen singular tag. So specimen, and I'm simply going to put square brackets and the number one, and then test XPath. And take a look, sure enough, that returns uh, the very first specimen. If you're not sure, we'll go back, whoops, sorry. Uh, we'll go back and look at the uh, XML tree and we'll see that sure enough, the first specimen, 3947, Brandon Jones, beautiful tree. That is all that we've returned here. If I want the second specimen, guess what? I put in the number two, test XPath, and we get our second specimen, which is the Joe Blog specimen at RG, uh, Royal Botanical Gardens Q in London. Okay, now let's say I want the last specimen and I don't know how many there are. I simply type in last, open and close paren, and once again, I keep this within the square bracket and I choose test XPath. And this returns to me the very last specimen on my list, which is the one that's somewhere in South America. So that's a look at some handy queries that we can do to find specific specimens within our document when we're dealing with a repeating group of specimens. And a repeating group of specimen, a repeating group in XML is, is relatively common. It means that we have a one-to-many relationship. In our case, the one part is simply the scientific definition of an eastern redbud with things that we can say about all eastern redbuds. Uh, is it edible? When does it bloom? Uh, what's the sun tolerance? What's the bloom color? Things like this that we can say about all 
red buds. One small footnote there, the bloom date really depends on geography uh, because the bloom date is timed by uh, essentially the, uh, the temperature uh, where the plant is. So a little, a little bit there that, that uh, uh, a little leniency I've given myself there. But nonetheless, within this now we have a repeating group of specific red buds that we can touch. Okay, so let's say that we only want red buds in the northern hemisphere. And that's fairly easy to get because the definition of the northern hemisphere is essentially latitude greater than zero. So you see we have a latitude of 39.47 for Cincinnati, 52.40 for London, and then negative 22.50 for uh, somewhere in South America. I'm using approximations here, not exact GPS locations. That's why I say somewhere in South America. So we only want uh, we only want specimens that are in uh, that are in the northern hemisphere. In that case, we can take our selection here and we can make it a little uh, more a little more verbose, a little a little more intelligent. What I can do is I can say, oh, okay, so plant specimen specimen. We keep that going, but now I'm going to say I want to interview a specific child of this specimen tag. And that child is going to be called latitude. Now, careful on the syntax here. Let me zoom up a little bit so you can see that in higher definition. You notice that we have slash plant, slash specimens, slash specimen. Careful, you don't do another slash before you get to the square brackets here, even though latitude is a child of specimen. Because what we're doing is we're saying, show me the entire specimen where its child latitude has a specific value. And in this case, we want the value of a positive latitude, or in other words, a latitude which is greater than zero. So let's go ahead and hit test and see what we get. In this case, we get two specimens returned. One of them is our Cincinnati tree. The other one is our tree at the Royal Botanical Gardens Kew in London. Uh, but notice that we do not get the South American tree. So it worked as we had hoped. Okay, so let's do one more. Let's say, uh, let's give it, let's go with the uh, London tree. Let's say latitude is greater than 50. So that means we are going to include our tree in London. We are not going to include the tree in Cincinnati or the tree in South America. So for this, we say latitude greater than 50, and we do test X path again. And sure enough, now we have, uh, now we have only that London tree. Now, there was a kind of interesting there was a kind of interesting notation that I had on the presentation I want to take a look at again. Uh, I talked about some, some XPath terms that I don't tend to use a whole lot, but occasionally do come in handy. And one I want to take a look at now is the double dot, which means go up a level. So af if we're at the child level, walk up one step. Uh, I've seen XML documents that are absolutely humongous. I've seen some that are several megabytes large. Uh, as I said, this is a smaller one, but sometimes you might reach all the way down here into one of these great-great-grandchildren, which is way tabbed in, uh, for example, our Q tree, and we want to reach way, way up to an ancestor, and we want to find something like, say, its genus. So let's try that. This is going to take us all the way down to the specimen child, and to get from the specimen child up to, the, uh, up to its parent, we will do another slash and then a dot dot. And you know, we can just test as we're going along. So test X path. This should give us a little more stuff. Sure enough, this walked us up from our Q tree up to the specimens element. Okay, if I do slash dot dot one more time, so go to uh, yet another level of parent. I go to text, test X path. And notice that in this case, it happens to give us the entire document because that is the great the great-grandparent that we have walked up to. But now we can start walking back down and I can say genus and text test X path. And you notice that this gives me only the genus called Circus. So let's visualize that. We walked from plant to specimens to specimen. Under specimen, we specifically picked the one at Kew Gardens in London. And then we walked back up to its parent, specimens, back to its parent, plant, and then down to genus. So we used a little bit of relative pathing here. Now you might say, well, you only have one genus. Why didn't you just go to genus right off the bat? 
I certainly could. That I certainly could do that, but I'm going on the assumption that this is a small XML document and a larger document might have multiple plants, each plant with its own unique genus. So we're kind of looking at this thinking that this is a small document that really represents a much bigger document. That bigger document would have a much deeper X path. Okay, one more I'd like to take a look at. If you don't know the full path from root, you can do a double slash and I can say something like double slash species and that will return to me all occurrences of species no matter where they live in the XML document. In this case I only have one species so a test XPath returns sure enough canadensis which is the species for the redbud tree. Now let's say I had something that was multiple like latitude. Okay let's do double slash latitude. It's going to have to dig fairly deep for this. So test XPath and notice in this case I have three latitudes within my document and so in this case it returned to me all three. So the double slash is a handy one if you just need to say gosh I don't know where this is or maybe I don't know the entire document, the entire XML could be anywhere. The double slash will search through the entire thing and find that document or rather we'll find that element. So one thing I want to consider, what if we only want positive values? Can we use the double slash and can we use the square brackets? The answer is yes, but we do need to know one more thing. We do need to know the parent of the latitude. Now this one gets really interesting because I want to show you two ways to do it. We know, because we've done it before, that the parent of latitude is specimen. So I can say specimen and then we're saying from specimen I only want specimens where latitude is greater than zero. So note that still works with the double slash test XPath and here we're getting back the specimens that have a latitude greater than zero. No surprise there. If I want only the latitude, one more slash and, and latitude and test XPath and you see now unlike before when we got all three latitudes now we only have the two latitudes which are greater than zero. Now we just happen to know that the parent of latitude is specimen, but what if we didn't know that? This is a really funny one here. If we didn't know that, we can use that double dot parent, parent node operator to say find latitude, go to its parent. Now show me only latitudes that are greater than zero. Uh, and then from that show me only the latitude value, not the latitude and its siblings. So I know that's kind of a funny thing that I just said, but essentially uh, we can use this kind of selection and we can say find it on any parent uh, provided that latitude is greater than zero. So test XPath here, once again we get the same results. So a bit of a funny construction, but nonetheless that's giving me only latitudes which are greater than zero. Once again, if I wanted to uh, do the London thing and say only ones greater than 50, test XPath, there we go. If I wanted only Southern Hemisphere, I could say less than zero, test XPath, and there we go. So at this point, we have taken a look at several different uh, combinations that we can do for XPath. And essentially, you now have a series of blocks that you can put together to build up a more complicated XPath query. And indeed, this will help us out in our next topic, which is going to be XSLT. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.